I have returned once again to the actual demo stream of Sarazandmai. We're good to go, we're good to go, we're good to go. So yes, we have returned to have episode 4 of Sarazandmai. And as your episode 3 actually was amazing once again. The show has just literally been incredible this whole entire time. I mean, I must say, how it's actually handled quite a lot of revelations actually has been incredible. Like, the way that the way it's actually using, like, show, don't tell, it's just... It's exquisite. It's exquisite, I must say. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's buenissimo. So, yeah, I mean... Actually kind of episode, I actually kind of hope episode 4 doesn't really kind of carry that whole entire notion on, because it's just... It's good, the show. It's, it's really good. So anyways, actually put on Twitch, tw actually put on to actually gone live. There we go. So gone live for episode four of Sarah Zanmai. And with that, as I say every single stream, are we good to go? Are we good to go? Are we though? That is the undying question that I ask every single stream. On that front, we certainly are. On this front, we certainly are not Twitch. You are betraying me. What are you? What are you doing? And there we go. We're actually good to go now. It's, it's all working now. It's all working. We're good to go. So anyway, let's actually, let's actually watch this thing in three, two, one. So that's the thing absolutely. And now. Oh. Man. <laughs> Is that Elgata again? I swear every single character you actually voice is shoots something and gets shot. That's why I've actually kind of realised. <laughs> or both actually speaking of the devil. Oh man. But yeah, I mean, episode, episode 3 was just... It's one of those episodes that really kind of it solidified the show is just just the best thing. Like it's it's kind of really too unique for its own good because you try to compare it with something else, you just can't. It's impossible because it's just it's its own kind of niche in a way. But there's a lot of things that other shows didn't really kind of try to accomplish, but it's actually kind of done it in such a way that it kind of feels organic. Like the idea because other shows do tend to actually kind of kind of tackle the idea of like a post kind of like what's the word I used last um, stream. I can't remember, actually can't remember, um... Yeah, that's what I kind of thought, because a lot of, I kind of thought it would be longer, but it's only 11 episodes long. I, I saw what I, I used last last stream, hyper-realised. It, a lot of other shows do tend to actually kind of look at the idea of a hyper-realised society, I mean, films do it as well, but here it kind of feels organic, because it's kind of like, you can tell it's our own world, but kind of just advanced. It doesn't really feel like it's trying to do something more than what it's actually trying to accomplish. It's just doing what the world is actually would be like said, if said thing were to kind of get out of control, which I actually kind of do appreciate. It's just, it's do it does everything so perfectly. I still always for appreciate the fact that she does use show don't tell quite often. That's actually just like the best thing ever. <laughs> More show to do it. It's just it's 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 such a nice thing to have. Yeah, it actually might have really be the point where he gets found out. That actually might be an interesting revelation as well. Of 
God, why is Suda's voice so freaking hot? It's every single goddamn time. I wonder if the whole thing with the gun being CG is actually purposeful. Because I noticed that last stream, I was like, why is the gun CG? But it kind of dawned on me, is it trying to do something? The lighting this show is really good as well. It's one of the things this show actually has really going for it. Like the like the lighting is so good. See, it's kind of, it's, it, it's, it, it is literally a social commentary on the whole entire thing. It's actually really, it's actually really well handled as well. Because the world established it already, so when it's actually said by character, it makes sense. I really do hope, I really do hope Ogata's not an arsehole in this show. At least give me one, at least give me one show he's actually a good boy. At least give me one show he's a good boy.
Man, it's sometimes depressing. I mean, I guess he's kind of, he's not a fully good boy, he's kind of, he's kind of, he's kind of like, kind of like Garter in a way. Kind of like Garter in a way, but Ogata's kind of more of an arsehole in, in a way as well. It's confusing me, okay? It's confusing. Oh boy. Oh boy. Are we actually get are we actually getting the um we getting the best scene of the whole entire episode again? Is it happening? Yeah, this show is uh, very interesting. I could actually watch this scene for like, the rest of time. It is so freaking good. Yeah, this show is very interesting. <laughs> Maybe to be honest, because always there, there's been um, that's happened in the past where it's actually kind of it's kind of looked at the whole entire idea that when a transformation happens, it kind of affects the person in some way. You just you just not you don't notice it until the very end, where it all comes out like oh, it's all the interesting perception of the whole entire show beforehand.
I do love this show so much, though. <laughs> I do love this show. Man, it's actually a really cool shot as well. <laughs> Such a cool shot. Oh, that actually was pretty crazy, to be honest. Huh. Huh. I do really like the use of shadows though, it's actually really freaking cool. So I guess this must be the opening to the episode now.
that was a ridiculously cool shot as well. This show is good when it comes to shots. Damn. And there we go. It's episode four. This is actually really kind of cool because it kind of it reinforced a lot of the themes that the episode that the show actually kind of didn't very um, establish the whole entirety of the hyper realized world itself. I like the whole whole entire aspect how it kind of um, went. Look, everyone else is kind of oblivious to what's actually really going on. It kind of makes sense because in this world, the two preoccupied was actually kind of in their hands, the kind of the desires they have and stuff like that. It's actually kind of cool how it actually advanced that whole entire theme. Because it kind of makes sense why there's like everyone else is kind of not a part of the world. If you get what I mean, it's, like, it's actually just literally four characters in this world, kind of, kind of, kind of in a way. It's very interesting. A lot, I've seen a lot of shows do this, but it's always been kind of done to a degree that it, it doesn't always feel that great. But here it makes sense because of the way the world is established and everything's actually going on around it. It makes sense. I actually really like it. So yeah, I mean, and also I like the whole entire idea of how the episode title, if you look at it from a literal, literal standpoint, it did in theory kind of make sense. The idea of him being so far away, but the event when he was a kid actually did in theory change that whole entire aspect. How in a way actually did in theory become closer, in a way. It's actually kind of like the worst possible way to actually become closer, but it did in a way. And also we kind of got a semi good boy, good boy out of Suda as well, which is actually a good, which actually is a good thing to have. <laughs> I mean, he was, he's not the best of all characters. He's actually still kind of morally grey, but it's kind of... He's still, he's still a semi-good boy. And that's all that matters. Oh, after, after credit scenes, boys. After credit scene, boys. Um, any reason why he was walking on his back on his back just then? What? What a twist! Again, what a twist! <sighs> I mean, unless he's just saying it's actually kind of um, satisfied the guilt that he, he's actually probably feeling. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. That's actually quite interesting, to be honest. Let's face it. It's actually quite an interesting twist. Actually, kind of him, him basically saying, look, I hate her, which it's one of those things I'm guessing he probably doesn't mean. It. I'm, I, I imagine he's probably saying it because he just wants to kind of offload what he's currently feeling, giving that away. Who knows? But it's actually quite an interesting twist. And yeah, I mean, um, Enter walking on, walking on his back was just like one of those shots of like, why? I'm terrified, but why? <laughs> just, I said like, why? Okay, but why? So yeah, I mean, overall, I like the episode. It's actually quite an interesting episode overall when um, we look at it from the perspective of the characters. The one thing I actually did really like was the, was the part with the leak. The leak was actually really freaking interesting because I liked the use of shadows because shadows doing through become intimidating to a young person. I liked how they played with that whole entire asset because it's one of those things that if you see a shadow that's actually larger than, larger than yourself, it's quite terrifying and it's actually it was actually used to the degree that it did it didn't really make sense. 
they actually kind of made them seem as if they're actually kind of like these big, like kind of scary monsters. And I did actually like that because it kind of plays in to the whole interest of him being a kid and actually him being terrified. And I really did like that. I thought it was actually quite an interesting use of, the, again, the visual medium because it's one of those things that sometimes the visual medium use, is used not to the degree that you actually kind of want it. And here it's actually used, everything's used to the point that it doesn't really kind of feel it's warranted within the world itself. That's what I kind of like about it. Like every single thing is not wasted. Everything makes sense to how it's actually kind of established in the world. And actually then a lot of the things doing free happen. It happens because the world actually doesn't free kind of dictate it. And also Shadows doing, didn't free kind of have that aspect of being like, it made sense to the fact is that he would actually finds intimidating actually kind of funny scary especially with the actual theme going on behind it as well and yeah i did also like the fact that um the episode actually was about him him saying look i want to be closer but there's no, there's no way in hell we can because you're so far away so from a literal, literal perspective he is so far away he's a character so far away from him that you actually can't even really kind of get to him but then once you find out the significance of the gun, it all makes sense because that whole entire event completely like brought them closer in the kind of the most like not kind of way you expect to actually kind of be because it's what you expect like brothers to actually kind of get closer from a different kind of perspective. But here it's kind of used in the idea that the actual world that his brother inhabited was outside of the reach of the character of him. So him actually killing that character, that, that gang member, didn't actually allow him to actually kind of grow, go into that world in a way, and actually become a part of the world that his brother inhabits. It's actually kind of it's actually kind of an interesting use of the whole entire idea because again it's one of those things that sometimes well sometimes it didn't very really kind of it doesn't happen it doesn't actually speak it doesn't it doesn't really happen in other shows I mean Banana Fish did it as well with Ag and Ash Ag being outside of Ash as well but then actually slowly kind of going into his world as well the same thing applies to this episode as well the idea of him slowly kind of going into the actual world of his brother. But through the use of the idea of how the show actually structured it, like the show structured it in a way that you kind of expect something's going to happen, but you didn't expect it to actually kind of be that he kills the character, but in theory he does, and they actually didn't really kind of have a different kind of outcome in the end. It's very kind of interesting, I actually quite liked it. It was actually a very interesting use of that whole entire idea. So yeah, I mean... Really, the show is just so freaking good, I must say. Each week it just kind of gets better and better. I mean, the use of lighting just then with Kazuki was actually really freaking cool, I must say. It was just one of those things I just really did like how they utilize lighting because it's one of those things that kind of it creates antagonistic traits within the characters as well. It does happen in certain mediums, but it's kind of underutilized sometimes. But here is actually kind of used to the point that you actually didn't really get to um, see the fact that there's actual kind of antagonistic traits in these characters that actually as time goes on you slowly learn who these characters are i mean certainly sometimes you do in find it conflicting because it's one of those things that these characters don't, exi don't exhibit these kind of emotions but it's one of those things that you kind of then also theorize there's something going on behind closed doors that can go that way so he can't in free say he hates his sister because it's one of those things why would he hate his sister i mean he has the kind of put on his act his whole entire time to actually satisfy her, but at the same time he's one of those characters there's not actually in free exhibit those emotions. So, in doing so, you actually wonder there's something more going on there. I do like that. Because one of those things that kind of then makes you theorise what could it be? What could be the underlying meaning behind that? Is he just saying it because he wants to offload the guilt, like I said beforehand? Or does he actually legit hate her? We just don't know. But it's actually a very interesting kind of twist to end on because it's one of those things you just don't know what it doesn't really mean. But it's actually kind of a interesting outlook for the rest of the whole entire narrative. So, yeah, I mean. It was just really good. I mean, in the way, we actually kind of got a good boy out of Agata's character as well. That's the major thing. I was like, please don't be an asshole again. Oh, he's not kind of an asshole. I mean, it's just, it's it's a, it's it's a cool time to be alive, as they say. It's a cool time to be alive. He actually had a heart in the end. I thought actually kind of cool because Agata currently doesn't actually have a heart. So there's that. At least Suda has a character that actually does have, have a semi-heart, which is the main thing. So, yeah, I mean, that is... Um, that's me done for today. So, as, so actually, as always, if you have enjoyed this whole entire time as a whole on Twitch, then do leave that good old follow because indeed it's only quite a bit. So you'll then know when these streams go live and actually watch these streams live as well. And also, if you have enjoyed it here on YouTube and you do want to leave a like, then do leave a like because indeed it's only quite a bit. If you have enjoyed it here on YouTube and you do want to leave a bit longer, then do indeed leave a sub because indeed it's only quite a bit. If you have enjoyed it here on YouTube and you want to leave a bit longer after the whole entire point, then do in free follow me on Twitter because indeed it's only quite a bit. On Twitter, actually, streams are live and streams I do as well. You don't have a Twitter account, but do not have a theory of a Discord, have a Discord server. Actually, it's in theory 20 streams. It went t t God damn. God damn. <laughs> I could not speak just then. I'll tell you when these streams go live and these streams I do as well. But until next, until next episode 5 of Sarazan Mai. See you guys later. Bye for now.